presentation. Oh, that was uh, surprising. Um, opening of the first part of Zhang Mei Su's Intangible Threads. So Zhang Mei will be our third artist in residence since the inception, as Bruno mentioned in 2018. And we're so thrilled and honored to have this meaningful exhibition in our Su Zhao style scholars garden, inspired by Zhang Mei's childhood memories in Su Zhao, exploring the relationship between identity, migration and modernity. I wanted to thank Zhang Mei and her wonderful staff of volunteer at this time and working around the clock, making this exhibition happen in such a tight timeline and facing the uncertainties and challenges um, with the current pandemic situation that is imposed on us. And of course, uh, to our amazing staff, Bruno, who's our organizational genius, uh, Brenda, who's behind the scenes above and beyond hustling can sometimes go unnoticed. And of course, last but not least, to our cultural experience specialist, Lillian Lee. Uh, so Lillian's can-do enthusiastic and charming presence has been such a bright light during these uncertain times at the garden. And besides her being multi-talented in so many ways, she's really taken on the reins in helping lead and develop this artist in residence program here at the garden. And her involvement has been instrumental in bringing this exhibit to fruition. And of course, with the help of Mr. Gu Xiong, who will be speaking momentarily. So without much further ado, I will now turn the platform over to Mr. Gu to say a few words. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, thank you, Lorraine, uh, for your in, uh, introduce Xiaomi Su's exhibition. And uh, I also would like to say congratulations to Xiang Mei Shu for her new exhibition called Intangible Thread. So this exhibition especially, uh, it's interesting to me to see where Xiang Mei Shu is coming from, because she's coming from Shuzhou, then Dr. Sen Yasen's traditional Chinese garden also from there. I think that this exhibition is linked to those two places geographically is, is quite interesting because uh, Shu, Shu, Xiang Mei Shu's work is dealing with traditional wood loom and uh, transformed into the industrial pipe, you know, that kind of lie and the movement to carry on the change, the traditions from past to contemporary. And also from China to Shuzhou, I found that it's quite interesting, her paintings and the installations of pen wells is work to each other, especially the wooden shadows flying and turned into the wind of pen wells. I think that transformation through the exhibitions, through individual uh, paintings, it works out very well. And uh, I encourage people to go to the garden to look at this uh, exhibition to share with Sue's idea and artworks. Uh, again, thanks to Su present such beautiful exhibition, but also thanks to uh, Dr. Senya Sen's garden to present this wonderful exhibition to the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gu. Uh, I want to also introduce now um, our artist residence, so Mei Su. Uh, I also want to mention that the, the overall uh, presentation, it will last for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes, we will have a PowerPoint presentation which you really uh, can see right now in, in your screens. And then at the end, we will show a two minute video from a gallery perspective, which will be hopefully your perspective once you visit the garden as well, with some uh, um, in-depth view of um, Sue's installations as well. And uh, you are able at the end to post some questions. Um, I've opened the chat room so you can ask the questions uh, to me and I will post the questions for you at the end with a Q&A that will last 
I would say for about 20 to 25 minutes, or you can use the raise uh, my hand feature here on Zoom, and then um, you can pose the question yourself and you can unmute yourself and ask the question to, to our artists in residence as well um, at the end. So without further ado, thank you all very much again for joining us this evening and um, thank you. Um, so Sue, thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Xiaomei Su. I'm the artist. So thank you, Bruno, and thank you, Lorraine, and thanks, uh, uh, Professor Gu, to present me and introduce uh, me to uh, our audience. And uh, um, it is a great opportunity to have a show like this in Dr. Sang Yat uh, classical, uh, classical Chinese Garden. Um, uh, can you guys see my PowerPoint properly? Yes, yes, it's great. Great. All right. Okay. So, um, oops. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was uh, actually born in Sudo and uh, grew up there. Um, as you know, um, Dr. Sang Yat Classical Chinese Garden um, is modern after Sudo traditional garden. Uh, I took this picture in outside the garden. Uh, we can see it's exactly similar, uh, the garden in Suzhou. When you are there, you will feel you are in Suzhou, but this is in Vancouver. And also uh, many materials of this garden were originally from Suzhou. So this space is very special to me. And sometimes I feel a strong connection with this space. So I'm so excited to exhibit my work here today. Uh, this is another picture. I took in the garden. Uh, my experience in my hometown Suzhou is precious for me. Uh, some of my artworks ideas are from these memories. When I was uh, a kid, I saw a big wood loom machine placed in the living room of our house in Suzhou. My grandma and my mom were sitting on the loom a wood shuttle was flying back and forth between two layers of cotton thread. Different plaid patterns slowly appeared. Every piece of textile was beautifully woven with a chomping sound. This is a beautiful memory of my childhood in my hometown, Suzhou, China. In the picture, you can see the old uh, wood loom. Uh, this actually I took in the museum. So, um, the traditional wood loom now disappeared. We only can see in the museum. Before every family have this kind of wood loom uh, in the home, at home. So fam, uh, they're normally like a grandma or mom, they were weaving the clothes for family that making clothes or quilt or sheet like that. So new industry in China has been built up remarkably. Advanced, uh, um, Oh, this is a piece uh, was uh, made by my mom 30 years ago. So uh, uh, on that kind of wood loom machine, normally uh, the, uh, the piece will, the pattern normally will be rectangular or square uh, uh, shape, the style. And uh, the color is uh, like black, white, red, uh, blue, and green. It's very beautiful. Um, however, the traditional wood loom uh, disappeared. The new industry in China has been built up remarkably. Advanced weaving machines have replaced old looms. Um, there are different generation weaving machines. Um, these two, uh, they still use in, in the factory. Um, big factory have taken over small family workshops now, and a new industries has replaced a traditional craft. Uh, many new technology factories have replaced a traditional craft. Many new uh, technology factory and the company were built up in Suzhou. These paintings are based on my father's factory. There are many uh, high tech factory and a company like this raising up in Suzhou. They are becoming more important industry 
than the traditional weaving industry. So, At the same I'm, time, a big so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for interrupting you, Sue. So, your microphone, I think, is picking up some weird interference. So I don't know. I, 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 I've been getting some some information that it's picking up some interference with your microphone. Oh, okay. So if you can just adjust it, maybe it's your mouse or something. Uh, it's just picking up some some noise, and it's sometimes right. it's hard to hear you. Okay, now it's better. Yes, it is. It's perfect. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. I'm so sorry. All right, no problem. Um, at the same time, a big migration is brewing in China. People from countryside leave their homes to big cities or foreign countries in order to look for new opportunities. My family uh, was part of this great migration. We moved from countryside to the city and I left China to be educated in Canada. In this um, gallery art space, I use 200 pinwheels to create the wind and show this movement. A pinwheel was a type, uh, a typical toy we played during our childhood. A piece of paper, a piece of wire, and a wheat straw could make a pinwheel. Holding a pinwheel, I was running in the field. I could feel the wind that, cre uh, that the pinwheel created and brought me into a new space. Of course, my life in new country in this new space is very challenging. And um, uh, as a new immigrant in Canada, I experienced both peace and conflict. On one hand, I needed to learn the newness in order to fit into my host country. On the other hand, I always feel the primordial pool of my origin. After struggling between these two cultures for years, I started to ask myself who I am. Suzhou Garden is a symbol of traditional Chinese culture. Dr. Sun Yat classical Chinese garden, modern after Suzhou Garden, bring the Chinese and Canadian culture together. Uh, in the show, I have applied inspiration from the traditional Suzhou Garden design into my 16 contemporary painting. In the picture, you can see the, uh, in the middle, there is a window. This is a very traditional design window uh, in Suzhou uh, Garden or Suzhou like a traditional house. So I use this kind of traditional, uh, I inspire inspired uh, from this traditional design into my painting. You can see my pipe, the line of pipe. Oh, this is more clear. Um, so I use this kind of uh, um, um, design um, into my painting, uh, become very contemporary look. This is uh, the traditional garden, the door uh, decoration. You can see the structure. Also, 200 pinwheels uh, connect different times and spaces together. And interestingly, I once did a pinwheel installation in Suzhou in 2012. During the exhibition, I once said, um, the pinwheel will create the wind and blow, in, blow to the Vancouver. After 10 years, the same pinwheel are presented in Vancouver. Paper, wire, and uh, wheat straw are all from uh, Suzhou. So this is, uh, I'm very excited about this. And this pinwheel really creates the wind which blow from Suzhou to Vancouver. The artwork come along with this garden space and create a unique transforming space for me. This is a space for me to re-identify myself as Chinese Canadian. And so this is my brief introduce um, my artworks and uh, my ideas of this exhibition. I hope uh, you guys enjoy it. Um, before I hand it back to the uh, Bruno, uh, I would like to uh, thank the garden team. team. Thanks Lorraine, thank Bruno, and thanks uh, Lillian help me create this show. And also thanks the garden uh, staff, give me a lot of support. And also I would like to thank my assistants and my volunteers, my friends to help come, uh, to come help me to install the uh, pinwheel. That's a lot of work. 
And I like to thank the Curtis, Shane, uh, Mustafa, uh, Esti, uh, Annie, Karen, and Lee. Thank you guys. And also I like to special thanks uh, Zhao Lei. He only took the picture and uh, uh, take the video and also add to the video. Thanks a lot. Okay, Bruno, now I hand back to you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I will be showing now um, the video of the, this exhibition. We know that sometimes uh, video does not go as, um, I would say, streamlined for everyone because we are aware of um, connection of the internet, but I will be sharing the link as well for our YouTube channel where you can see the video as well. But I will start sharing, at least trying to share the video so you can see it as well. Thank you very much. I think you can all see my video. Deceive. Okay, I will try and I will do my best and I will try to share the video. Just give me one second, please. Okay. Oh, they can see the video. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it was the video was not showing, but I'm I'm trying to work around it. Okay, I'm gonna turn off then new sharing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm sorry, everyone. No problem. Okay, so I will be sharing my video now. So let me just. Oh, I... you share or I share? Yeah, I will share the video. So okay. I'm sharing right now. I think you're able to see it now, hopefully. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, attempt number two. Okay, thank you all very much for your patience. And let's do that. Uh, there's no sound.
Okay, so I believe there was no sound in the video. I mm -hmm. apologize for that, but yeah, it, it, it I will share the YouTube. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's an internet problem because many people right now in yeah. Oh, just give me one second, please. Because I believe we're here. So so. Oh. Okay. Oh. So, okay. Okay. So, just give me one second. Oh. Okay, I think now it's okay. Okay, so thank you all very much. I'm, I apologize for this Zoom. I think I, I'm way out of practice, way more than I should be probably. Uh, so um, we can start now the questions and answers. I will, um, if you do want, please use your um, raise my hand on your um, Zoom screen, or you can write the questions yourself in the chat room. I can pose the questions as well. Um, for, for Sue. So we do have already here one question ready from Rob. So Rob is asking Sue, uh, how long did it take for you to put together this entire exhibition? Uh, I think about uh, five days we worked. Uh, we did the, the painting, hang the painting first, but the installation took quite a while to uh, even put all the pinwheel there, I still need to do the adjustment, make it more like a flowing and more like the wind. <laughs> so it takes quite, quite a bit of time to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, we have here one more question. So a question from, from Michelle saying, uh, I'm curious about the pinwheels. You've mentioned that they would carry wind from Suzhou to uh, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Do they have any other significance rather than movement, a more personal one, perhaps? Um, yes, it's pinwheel. Is I, I mentioned it's a very typical toy we played, you know, uh, during our childhood. Um, I especially choose a white because it's kind of like the the dream, you know, very purified dream for me. Um, want to go out to take a look outside of the world. So then during the experience, um, then it will become very colorful. So depending on, but the dream is very purified. That's why I choose the, uh, uh, the white color pinwheel. Yeah, then also um, when you like running during the field, you will feel really free. That pinwheel will uh, like running very fast. It is very excited and uh, I can feel I can like flying something like that. So it's a very special, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We have here one more question. So mm -hmm. next question uh, is, do, do you have anything that you are hoping to show that you haven't shown yet? You mean this exhibition? Uh, yes. Oh. Um... Actually, uh, I want to put more pinwheel, um, but uh, because the space has a limitation, so we tried our best to put all together, then flowing uh, well. Um, uh, I think uh, so far I'm pretty, pretty happy with the outlook. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, so the next question is, uh, do your dreams appear reflected in your work? Um, yeah, kind of. It's, I'm thinking on way to uh, achieve my dream. So um, I, I mentioned like, um, I'm looking for who I am. So through the art practice, I slowly uh, start to understand uh, what kind of person I like to be and how I can reach that kind of goal. So I think art practice is also the experience becoming who I am. So during like uh, art press, one, uh, one artwork, another artwork, I think I'm, I'm also growing. Yeah. Thank you very much. 
Um, next question. Uh, what, what is your favorite way to express your creativity? Um, use a word, like a one word. I think very purify, very pure. Yeah. So, great. Thank you very much. So I will, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Lorraine has a question. So Lorraine, if you want, you can mute yourself. Yes, thank you, Bruno. Um, so yeah, Chang Mei, I just wanted to uh, kind of delve into uh, what type of challenges you encountered uh, since coming to Canada. First of all, I'd like to know when you arrived here and the type of challenges that you face entering this new country. And did you arrive in Vancouver first or was it other parts of Canada first? Uh, I directly fly to the Vancouver, and this is also the first time I like uh, leave China. So, and then um, the language is uh, the first uh, uh, challenge for me because I only can say thank you <laughs> and hi, how are you? Then that's it. So I can't understand other people talking. I have to learn from very basic language. Um, then I kind of like a very shy um, characteristic. So it's for me hard for me to like. Uh, uh, go people and talk with them, especially my language is so poor. And uh, other than that, I think uh, I miss my family too. Um, because uh, at, at home, we always take care by our family, like a big family in China. But here you're alone, so you have to learn cook. You have to learn like everything you have, never like faced. So I think it's pretty challenging. But I, I think it's very precious experience you, I have. I become more independent and confident. And uh, I know what uh, I want to do and uh, who I like to be. So it's pretty good experience. <laughs> and, and I want to let you know that your English is perfect. That's great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you don't have anything to worry about. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Lorraine. Uh, so the next question is, did COVID make you more creative and productive as an artist? Actually, it's true. Uh, I did a lot of work and especially painting at home. And so um, the COVID make me like uh, think more, um, think more deeply, I think, uh, how the life affect me. So during COVID, I have some new works. Um, and I relate to the, the life and I relate to the, under the COVID-19, then uh, what the life could be. And there's new possibilities. Uh, of course, COVID-19 has caused a lot of a sad story, but under that situation, we still, um, um, there's uh, like many hopes, many possibilities we could be. Maybe there are different uh, lifestyle, but I think uh, uh, we will find a way, find a new possibilities. So my artwork is, um, um, some new artworks is talk about like this, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, we have here one more question. Uh, do you feel yourself changing as an artist now that you are in Vancouver? Yeah, it's, uh, I think I'm very different from when I just arrived. Um, I think I'm a, m more open, like uh, um, I'm willing to learn new things. I were willing to communicate with people. I willing to, um, no different cultures, different knowledges. I think I, I'm be more open and um, be more mature. Yeah. Thank you. So here, we, I do believe we kind of dive a little bit into this with, with, with Lorraine's question a while ago, but there is another question uh, about what was the biggest challenge for you to adjust as an artist to Vancouver? Um, I think most challenges here being artist is um, you have to survive. Like you have to, because uh, um, it's, it, it's not easy. Not, not only you need to create the work, this is a challenge. At the same time, you have to survive as artist. I think this is a very challenging for me. I was uh, quite stressful uh, during one period, but uh, now I figure out, so so I survived, and I, I I think I will keep on my 
way, being artist, try my best. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so I have uh, one more question here saying, how did the collaboration with the Dr. Sun Yat-sen Garden begin? Um, you mean cooperation with our work? I think we we come along, like go along very, very well. And uh, I, I had a lot of support um, from the garden and uh, a dog helped me the adjust the lighting, you know, everything. And the Lydia helped me creating, then Lauren. Uh, give us like uh, you know uh, support uh, through Lillian <laughs> and uh, also uh, Bruno uh, give me a lot of support. So I think it's uh, going pretty well. Yeah, I'm looking forward for my next show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I um, I have here one one more question uh, asking. Uh, we see in your paintings, we see a lot of clean lines. Were you always like that as an artist or were you sometimes a little bit more surrealistic? Um, uh, I have actually not always like that. For this theory, because uh, we I talk about an intangible line. So then uh, I start from the painting, talk about the weaving. For weaving is all like a thread line. So then the, the next theory, I, I uh, painted a lot of factory. So my father's uh, uh, factory, there had lots of the pipe. So for me, it's kind of like the line connecting with everything. So I continue use this kind of line. And also uh, interestingly found this, uh, uh, the traditional structure of the garden or of the uh, house in Suzhou, we always have this kind of you know structure. So it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, um, you know, I ins inspired from that into my artwork and I, I turn the pipe become this kind of design. It's very kind of abstract, but you can still see uh, the connection with the uh, traditional structure uh, from the, uh, the door or window into the very new modern contemporary painting. But I have other kind of uh, work, not like that <laughs> different, yeah. Thank you very much. So next question is, uh, how did the Vancouver art community support local artists? Oh, I think it's great. Um, uh, I When I um, come back to Vancouver, um, so uh, it is hard for me like start, I'm thinking, how can I start here? I knew uh, not a lot of people. So I started to try to connect with uh, uh, art society um, um, like the Western Vancouver, I started uh, at Western Vancouver and then I applied a show. Then they read back, back for me, they accepted it. So I was so excited. So I started slowly and then later I um, connect more, try the more different community. And as they are so willing to support, I think it's a great experience. I was really, you know, overwhelmed. It's great. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, how will your work transform now at this point? I, how I my work transform? Yes, how will your work transform? You mean to different style or? Uh, I, can I ask, I, I'm asking, I'm asking uh, the, I, I will probably get back to this question later. I will ask. Hello, just hello. To, oh, oh, awesome! Yeah, thank you very much. I was asking. I was I'm asking. I'm going to ask the question. Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. If you're, um, you can. although I don't see Xiangmei very often, I follow to her work whenever I can. She would show things on the internet. Uh, the, actually, my previous question was that I like to see the paintings by itself individually, clearly, for some time so that I can mix some observations, mm -hmm. analysis, comparisons to other paintings that you have. And it seems like at this time that when I see your work, they are so different than your previous work. Oh, yes. To me, it is a new transformation, combining yes. a fading craft Type of weaving into industrial forms in mm -hmm. factories. 
although your previous work have a lot of straight lines, mm -hmm. like in grids, like weaving. Mm -hmm. However, your uh, factory industry, the pipes are curves mm -hmm. and they link in a way that weavings cannot. Mm -hmm. And I find it very interesting to see the um, interplay between a rigidity on, of, of a weaving on painting, and yet I know it is soft and it curves. Mm -hmm. And yet when I go to a factory, all the pipes are so rigid. Yes. And you have broken and intermixed these forms so wonderfully in your artwork. Thank you. And, and I feel that it's a, a liberation in itself. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm really anxious to see what your next transformation would be. Um, I, please join me for next exhibition. It will come in, <laughs> <laughs> it come in April. You will see totally different, okay. even different uh, media. <laughs> yeah, I really look forward to it. Although yeah, I cannot yeah, go I to, to Vancouver. Physically. Yeah, I try to break some uh, rules for my creation to make something new. Uh, every time I want to reach something different. Yeah, but the story is still continue. I mean, sometimes I want to break the creating a, a, a structure to different format. Yes, so I know don't know. Rules anything. are there to be broken. <laughs> Sorry? Rules are there to be broken. Yes, yes. So I like I to will never that. be confined by rules. <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully like to... immigration laws will change too. All these immigration rules, I think hopefully one day they'll be broken too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for unmuting yourself and explaining the question. Thank you very much for that. And actually, this segues perfectly into the next question. So the next question is, can you give us a hint of what part two of this exhibition is going to look like? You mean the part two? Yes. Um, um, there's no painting, but it's still on the canvas. So please join us for in May, uh, in, in April. I hope we can have the opening in, uh, in person so you can see exactly what it looks like. <laughs> we definitely hope that too. And we actually hope that we will be able to host something, even if it's a closing ceremony of this exhibition yes. and invite you all for those of you who are able to join us in person or virtually again for a closing ceremony of this show, which we, we strongly believe that it, it totally deserves it. Uh, we have another question. Uh, so next question is, there are red and black lines in the work. Could you tell us what do these two colors represent? Um, black and white is a kind of uh, kind of memory. For me, memory is kind of black and white and very clean, very purified. Then a red is kind of uh, the color, uh, like a happy color, like in Chinese culture. This also refined the connection with the family. So these actually two series of paintings, um, I, after I leave, like, I left China to educate it in Canada. When I uh, went back to China, I feel uh, I, I kind of disconnect with my family because we have like uh, four years not living together. So there is a kind of uh, uh, communication we have broken. And so I use this kind of red line, try to reconnect our family. But now we are, we are good. But at that time, because I think we have quite a bit, like a long time not together, it's, it's hard. <laughs> different uh, like a lifestyle, different thinking. So yeah, now, now it's okay. So we, we had a communication. So I especially put the red to hint that. That's, that's very interesting. Thank when, you. Yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> I, I didn't ask you that question actually when, I, when we were there talking a little bit a few days ago. That's, that's great. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um, I have here um, then another question. Um, it's uh, about your um, experience in, in Vancouver right now, still as an artist. So it's saying, is this your first art exhibit in Vancouver or did you have any art exhibitions before? 
Oh yes, I did have other exhibition. Um, I have a, a photography uh, combined with the in installation and also like a 2D artwork combined the installation. I have a few in different places in Vancouver. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We are five minutes. We are still taking uh, questions, so we would start. We will stop in about five minutes. But please feel free to again raise your hand or chat in the chat room, please. Uh, next question uh, is: In um, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Did you always wanted to be an artist? Uh, not really. <laughs> when I um, just came to Vancouver, like. Uh, First time, at that time, uh, because China the um, the economic uh, is blowing, right? So my family um, helped me study business. So I, in my mind, I always thinking I'm going to study business. I did a uh, accountant job in China once. So when I came here, I'm thinking maybe I'm doing the accounting or maybe I'm doing the marketing. But uh, after the second year of the university, I tried the. Uh, join class because I always like join, but I never learned. I only draw by myself at home. So draw kind of things I like. So I'm thinking, okay, um, I I I gonna have a fun class for drawing class. Um, but I, <laughs> that class is very challenge. I thought I gonna fail the class, <laughs> but uh, and because I feel I can, I I, I will fail the class. So it uh, actually um, how can I say I was. So curious, it's it's uh, uh, cost me my I, I'm so curious why art like that because uh, in the class we talk about different kind of like uh, artists they have different art so it's totally different uh, what I I thought art is so I was so curious so then I decide I'm going to learn art I can I I'm going to be the artist because it's so different and it's so interesting and it's so like broad. And so creative. Yes, I want to be that kind of person. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, so the next question is, do you remember which one was your first ever painting? Do you remember what you did? Um, first painting. I think the first painting I did is a... Uh, in, in uh, at uh, first painting on canvas. I did a painting when I was little, but the first painting <laughs> on canvas is uh, uh, I think in the university, um, uh, the third year of university. Uh, I remember I did a kind of like uh, we have a still life painting class, so um. We I have first time to draw like a still life, but already have to put the color there. <laughs> it is very hard, Charlie. Uh, but I tried so because I saw many creative artists what they do. So I inspired from them. So I did a kind of a more like a Picasso style. I remember. <laughs> I, I maybe we get to see it sometime. I'm not actually <laughs> curious now to see the process style interpretation <laughs> <Okay>. from you. Actually, <laughs> thank you very much. Next question thank is: you. As an artist, what is one of the greatest things you have learned on your journey? Um, I think keep going. So, it, um, I think it's it's kind of hard. Like, uh, being an artist is a very hard way, but uh, keep going is a uh, key point to be an artist. Thank you. Uh, so next question again, this, I mean, it's, it couldn't, couldn't segue better. Uh, so is it, did, did you ever regret any of your decisions of changing careers and becoming an artist? Um, I have a few like a, a one, like a period of time because I was very stressful. I'm not regret, but I question myself. Like, uh, mm, do I made did I made the wrong decision? Like being an artist because it's it's gonna be very hard to uh, support my life. Um, but after like uh, I found a way. I think when I remember my friend told me said, uh, if there's one door closed, then there definitely another door will open for you. 
So this is exactly, I think I experienced. So I never regret, but I, I will question myself once, yes. Thank you so much. We do have two more questions here, but yeah, keep them coming. So and we'll, we'll make sure that we'll try to ask all of them. Um, so the next question is, uh, are you scared of color or you just prefer to design very streamlined black and white? Uh, I think depend on the period of time. Um, during this work, I prefer use black, uh, white, and uh, 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 red color. Um, I feel this, this series, uh, this three color is the best like for I can express what I'm thinking. It's very simple, but the idea is very clear. Um, but later work or other work, I have a um, different color. I'm not afraid of, I just feel sometimes color will say something. There's a word behind the color. So not just the structure, the color will speak out. Next question. Do you have in mind a place where you would like your pinwheels to fly now after Vancouver? I hope the pinwheel can fly anywhere in the world. Uh, that's my dream. <laughs> Thank you. So we do have here one last question. Um, so if you do have any, any more questions, I would say we, we could have two more minutes. Otherwise, then we'll just wrap it up. But again, if you do have any questions even after, because sometimes you do just remember that you had something on your mind, you do, I believe you do have my email or even on our social media, please reach out and we'll try and and, and ask Sue to, to kindly ask the question so that we can forward that um, to you as well. Uh, so the next question we have here is, where do you see yourself as an artist in 10 years? Will I see myself as an artist? Will see myself? Um, I think one time I was uh, afraid that I'm an artist. And so I always said, I I'm doing artwork, but I never like said I'm an artist. Uh, I think one friend told me, if you don't think you yourself is artist, how can you be an artist? So after that, I never afraid to say that. So I think uh, in my heart, I'm an artist. And just to add on a little bit more depth into that question, uh, in 10 years from now, what's your biggest dream? Um, my biggest dream, um, I think I want to... Um, share my artwork with others, with all the people, if it's possible, share my ideas, share my experience. I think this is my dream, yeah. Okay. So we do have here one last question, which I, I believe it sums up really well our Artists in Residence <laughs> program as well, not only exactly what you said right now, uh, what would be, um, the biggest advice or an advice you would give to a young artist who is starting just right now? Um, I think for me, my experience is uh, keep going. If you are really think you are artist in your heart, then keep going. I think this is uh, my suggestion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. We, I think I yes, we could stay here for a few more hours, but we all have we all have probably other plans. And I really really appreciate everyone for for staying with us, for joining us tonight. Um, uh, we have two comments here, not questions, but comments that I feel like we should also voice. So one comment would be that you will need to document the flying the pinwheels all over the world. Congratulations on your work. Well, that's very good. <laughs> and the second is saying that um, uh, someone is really, truly proud of you to share the, this precious art. Oh, so it's from uh, Sally Song. Thank um, you. 
So everyone is very proud of you. We're getting a lot more, a few more messages as well. So uh, we are certainly very proud of you. We, we thank, thank you very much for accepting to be our artist in residence. We invite all of you, for those of you who can join us in person, we know that traveling, it's, it's not as easy as it was, but for all of you who can join us um, at the Dr. Sun Yat-sen Classical Chinese Garden, we will be um, showing this exhibition until March 30th. Um, the garden will most likely keep opening from Wednesday to Sunday, so there's a lot of days to choose from. Uh, for those of you who can come, you can follow us on social media. We'll make sure that we'll share as much as possible or Sue's um, social media as well. I will be emailing um, everyone the YouTube link, I know, and I apologize again for the sound. It was a very, really nice music, actually. So I was just enjoying it by myself, but I will share that with you too. Uh, thank you to Lorraine. And thank you to Mr. Gu Xiong as well. Um, thank you to the team of the garden. Thank you most, mostly to Sue. And I don't know, Sue, if you want to say just a few words as well, but on our end, we wish everyone a lovely evening. And again, thank you for joining us and, and we hope to see you in the garden. Yeah, I just uh, want to thanks again for Lorraine and Bruno, Lillian, help me like, uh, you know, this opening. And it's very different experience from other like regular opening, but I think it's uh, it's very good. It's uh, it's 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 fantastic. <laughs> and then thanks for uh, Professor Gu to speak for me. Thank you, thank you, everyone, to join tonight. I love you guys. Thank you all very much. It was a pleasure, and have a lovely evening, everyone. This was certainly not an in-person, but we do feel the warmth and we do we feel like we are all connected. So thank you all very much and have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.